All right, hello and welcome to the Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, and Pipeliner CRM. And today I'm delighted to be joined by Chris Widener, who is in lovely Scottsdale, Arizona. How are you doing, Chris? Hot Scottsdale, Arizona. I was going to say, yeah. And I live in San Diego. I live near the 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 coast in San Diego, and this is where a lot of people from Scottsdale end up during the summer. We have our our population goes up with the amount of Arizona uh, license plates around here. <laughs> both my both my stepdaughters are headed off to mission here. Yeah. Uh, oh, they are. Yeah. Uh, well, it's nice, right? And we've actually haven't had that great a, a summer so far, but the weather's picking up and it's nice. So they'll, they'll have a fun time. But then Mission Beach is always fun. Um, OK, so Chris is uh, named one of the top 50 speakers in the world, one of Inc. Magazine's top 100 leadership speakers. He's spoken to everybody, AT&T, Cisco, Microsoft, uh, GE, you name it. And one of Chris's most uh, requested subject is the art of influence. So I thought that's what we'd start. Uh, that's what we would talk about today. And uh, so, Chris, let's just baseline this for a minute. Uh, some people probably have different ideas of what influence actually means. So when you talk about influence, what do you mean by that? Yeah, and actually, in the beginning of my speeches, I say, look, I'm going to give you a definition. It's a working definition for us today. It might not necessarily be how you define it, but it is the ability to change other people's thoughts, beliefs, and actions. So when you speak with people, you interact with people, you write to people, however you engage with people, if you can change their thoughts, beliefs, and actions, then you have influence in their life. Mm -hmm. So what are I know you have uh, you have four golden rules or, or steps. So let's let's talk. Let's talk about those. You say the the power of integrity creates trust. So why is integrity so important? And also, we live in this kind of world today, I think, where there's a lot of superficiality. There's a lot of, you know, you don't really know who you're dealing with because people have digital personas and there's real world personas. So tell me a little bit about integrity and how you can actually, uh, you know, project that you really are a person of integrity. Well, integrity uh, is something that is learned over time. You don't necessarily know if somebody has integrity. Mm -hmm. You can get cues. You can certainly, if someone refers you to somebody, then you, you assume they have integrity because you're assuming that person is spent some time or, or, you know, whatever knows. Um, but integrity, I always say when I give my speeches, there's one number one and the others you can put in whatever order you want. Number one is always integrity. Everything else put in whatever order you want. But integrity is the foundation because integrity is what trust is based on. Mm -hmm. And the number one thing you have to have, whether you're leading people or selling to people is trust. They have to trust you. And trust comes when you know what the other person's going to do, mm -hmm. right? Um, you, you know, we, we do this silly little exercise or we've done it in the past called a trust fall, right? Okay, that means I know because you're my friend or you're my classmate or you're my coworker that you're going to catch me. Mm -hmm. I don't think you're going to let me fall on the floor from six feet above you, right? I trust because I think or I know what you're going to do. So trust comes from the ability to know or understand what other people are going to do. Best way to, to have people come to that conclusion is to see you do it for a long period of time. So uh, and, and to never veer from that. Right. So interesting thing about the word integrity is that it shares the same root word as the word integer and mm -hmm. an integer is the old math term for a whole number. Now, let me just unwrap that really quickly. Maybe instead of saying whole, it means complete or the way I like to say it, it's undivided. Right. So, a whole number or integrity means to operate out of wholeness. It means it's not undivided. Here's what I mean. If you have a circle and you are wholly uh, um, truthful, then I can trust you yeah. because if I've known you for five years. and You've never lied to me. You mm -hmm. have integrity by very definition. But if we take a little line through that, you know, let's say we take a little line through that and half the time I tell the truth and half the time I don't. Now, I, by the very definition, since I've divided, it's no longer whole. Sometimes I tell the truth. Sometimes I don't. Now, I don't know if you have it. By definition, you don't have integrity. Mm -hmm. But now when you tell me something, I don't know whether you're telling me the truth. I don't know if you're operating out of this side or you're operating out of this side. And the, and the real scary thing comes from maybe I've never lied to you. But if I've lied to somebody else and you uh. know, now all of a sudden, right? And, and it's why, you know, certain professions have, uh, you know, integrity 
uh, questions, used car salesmen, sure. uh, players, you know, whatever, right? Because they have by reputation that they don't live out of integrity because sometimes they do this and sometimes they do that. Yeah, it's 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 a great point, and I think that we uh, obviously we we base trust uh, and integrity on consistency, right? So cons- if you're consistently honest, and also I always say that uh, you know to people, especially in sales or whatever, that chameleons are they're wonderful pets to have, and if you've ever seen them, they're fantastic, and you can put them up against things and see them watch change color, and it's great. A salesman, being a chameleon is not a good thing because just to what you just said is you need that consistency of action. So if you're wonderful to me during the sale, but after the sale, you're suddenly somebody who has no time for me, that's not, a, that you know, the trust is broken immediately. So I, I totally agree with you, that whole idea of consistency and being being a consistent person all the time. Well, I'll give you an example. Um, I was, I had narrowed it down to two cars, a Lincoln Navigator or a... Um, uh, I think it was a Denali, mm-hmm. uh, GMC Denali. I can't remember, but it was the Lincoln Navigator or it was this other big one. I can't remember what it was. Anyway, I was I was narrowed it down. I'd been searching for a week or two. I'd test driven them. I've gone in and out. That's how I buy cars. I'm. It's a Saturday morning. I'm going to go to both and I'm going to pick one. I go to the first one, which wasn't the Lincoln Navigator place. And I I, I go in and uh, the guy the guy that had been trying to sell me, he was gone. So it was a new guy. And he just starts telling me all this crazy stuff. The one that I remember is he says, he says, now you understand that the average person who buys a car from our dealership has an 840 credit score. And I said, you mean a 640 or a 740 credit score, right? He goes, no, an 840 credit score. I already knew that he had lied to me. And as I've done my speeches and talked to a million people over the last you know, years, I always ask, how many of you are in the business where you do credit scores and how many of you have ever seen anything over an 800? Yeah. And I have less than like five or six people raise their hand who've ever seen anything over an 800. Exactly. Average 840. So I already know this guy's a liar. So the guy says to me, he gets me down to final price. He says, Chris, I can't give you a better price if I wanted to. <laughs> and I said, Perfect. I'm going to go down to the Lincoln Navigator place. I'm going to look at them. I may come back. I may not. I want to, you know, I'm I'm making my final decision. As I'm walking out to the car, I'm about 10 feet from my Uh car. And he says, hey, 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 wait a minute. Now, you you know somebody's about to lie to you when they do this. Mm -hmm. He says this. Listen. (laughs) I love it. By the car right now, I can give you $1,000 less. And I said, sir, I've just made my decision. He said, great. And I said, I'm going to go buy the Lincoln Navigator. He said, Mm -hmm. why? He said, because you have no integrity. Mm -hmm. And he says, what are you talking about? And I said, you told me back in there that you couldn't give me another dollar off your if you wanted to. And I said, and frankly, I wonder if I get close to the car, if I can make another $1,000. I said, but here's your real problem. Since I don't trust you, I can't trust your finance department. I can't trust your parts department. I can't trust the service department. You've broken all trust with me because you've proven to me that you'll say one thing one time and another thing another time. And now I don't know which one to believe. And then in in essence, it was divided. I can't give you anything less. I can give you a thousand dollars less. And and by very definition, it's a lack of integrity. And uh, and I went down and I bought the um, I bought the uh, Lincoln Navigator. Yeah, and I think that's a that's such a great story because what it also illustrates, as you said at the end, is is the whole idea of the the buyer experience. The buyer experience is a to, is a total experience, right? And as you said, now you question everybody. I mean, they may have they may have the best finance department, they may have the best service department, whatever. But your negative experience with that one person has has killed the whole experience. So it doesn't matter whether the the accountant ran out and said. Listen, I've just made you a four course meal in here to help you through the process. You'd be like, no, I'm, I'm good. I'm good. Yep. Yep. Uh, and, and the next rule you talk about is the power of optimism creates admiration. And, and I really I really like this one because in so many ways today, and, I, and as I said, it doesn't matter where you sit on political spectrum, I don't care, um, is there's so much negativity, there's so much anger, there's so much, like, people have lost in many ways a sense of optimism. So can you, can you explain why optimism is so critically important if you want to be influential? It's interesting that you brought up uh, politics. So I'll give you a political example. 
And um, and I am I am an, uh, a nonpartisan political basher. Mm-hmm. I, I do a thing where I talk about integrity, and I talk about Richard Nixon and Bill Clinton. So I mm-hmm. use them both. Right. Both both sides have a lack of integrity. But it's interesting. There was a research project done by some linguistics professors where they went back and they took the um, the stump speeches and the, the slogans of all this slew of uh, presidential candidates over the course of history. And then they coded some words as optimistic words, some words as negative words and uh, pessimistic words. And they put them into a database and they did a, a, a you know, a, a computer analysis of the positivity of the stump speeches of presidential candidates. And what they found was, was that the most optimistic president presidential candidate wins every single time, except one time there was an anomaly. But 99% of the time, the most positive person wins. Now, let's take a look, and I'm not endorsing one way or the other, but let's just analyze the slogans of the last presidential candidates, Donald Trump and Hillary Clinton. And I do this in my seminars. I ask the question, what was Hillary Clinton's slogan? What was her big idea? What was the thing that was going to, you know, be optimistic? Yeah. Most people don't even no, know what her slogan was. I don't remember. Her slogan was, I'm with her. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was the slogan of her campaign. I'm with her. Okay? Not Now, interesting thing is, and again, if you, if you hate Donald Trump, that's fine. No problem. But let's just step back for a moment mm-hmm. and analyze it analytically. His was make America great again. Everybody knows, even mm-hmm. the people that hate him. They got yeah. those ubiquitous red hats, yeah. make America great again. Who doesn't want to make America great yeah. again? Right? Now the, the, the interesting thing is, uh, do you know who the first person was to, to say let to use let's make America great again, make America great again? Remember who it was? Ronald Reagan. Oh, of course. Mm-hmm. You know who the second person was to use Make America Great Again? Hillary's husband. Oh, Bill, the right Bill Clinton, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's make America great again. Why? Because people want to make America great. They want to make America great again. Frankly, you could probably go to Argentina and if they said, make Argentina great again or make you know, make Iran great again or make Russia great again or make Iceland great again, it doesn't matter. People mm-hmm. are, they respond and they admire people who want to take you to a better place. Mm-hmm. If somebody says, um, hey, if I buy your product, will it be good for me? Nah, probably not. <laughs> I'm not going to buy it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but it's you funny, know? it's funny, like I said today, because I think, I think because of all this negativity and everything, I think, I well, I don't think, I know, I truly believe that if you are positive and optimistic, you will stand out today. And it's a sad fact that you will stand out and differentiate yourself today. Absolutely. I, I, we are recording this the day after um, and two days after the Democrat uh, debates where there was like 147 people on stage. Yeah. And what's interesting to me is... It, I, b- it, I, believe, I, I believe they actually introduced the audience because it was quicker than introducing the candidates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now, I've done tons of political consulting. I've been a speech coach for people running for president, governor, senator, all the way down to running for local, you know, local um, city councils. But I've, I've actually worked with presidential candidates, United States presidential candidates. And I sit there and I think one person could really break out of this by, by not focusing on the negative, but doing nothing but cast vision, cast vision. Here's how it's going to be great. Instead of Trump's horrible, our health care is horrible, this is horrible, money's horrible, this is horrible. Nobody is inspired by negativity. Mm -hmm. Nobody. Um, But if you're the only person out of 20 who are talking, and you don't want to use the term make America great again, but if you would actually use language like that, all of a sudden you're going to be the only person they say, I kind of like that person. Even at a subconscious level, they admire people who are above the fray. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and, and so whether you're running for president of the United States or you're trying to sell automobiles or, you know, whatever you're trying to do, um, understand that people are triggered psychologically, emotionally by positive, optimistic people. Yeah. And let's face it, at the end of the day, if somebody is trying to sell you something and they're 
totally enthused by it. They're opti they're optimistic of what it's going to do for you, and they're genuine. Obviously, they need the integrity part, but that's 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 intoxicating in its own way, right? Absolutely. You know, it's funny. People ask me how you doing. You know, it's a standard question. You know, how you doing? And I always say the same thing: nearly perfect. <laughs> I'm nearly perfect. And and they'll and oftentimes they'll say, well, what can we do to make you perfect? Nothing, because nobody's perfect. Yeah. But you know what? It's it's great. Uh, you know, and they'll say, well, really? And I say, yeah. You know, I was in a line the other day, and and uh, I was two people deep, and the the cash register lady was apologizing that I had to wait two or three minutes. And I said, you know what? I could be in a Russian bread line. Every right. day that I every day that I'm not in a Russian bread line, every. <laughs> I don't wake up and I have to wonder whether I'm going to eat that day. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all about perspective. Absolutely. And, and that's, inter and people love that. I'll pull up the Starbucks window. How are you doing today? Nearly perfect. And they, they chuckle. They think it's funny. They like it. It's inspiring. It's, it's, it's fun for them instead of, well, I got to take the kids to school. <laughs> take the car in and I don't know how I'm going to pay for my transmission repair mm -hmm. and blah. The people at the Starbucks window don't want to hear that. No, no, they absolutely not since they've been there since 4 a.m. brewing your coffee. <laughs> and so, um, the yeah, so the third one is uh, so the power of service creates loyalty. Uh, and I think this is this is a, obviously it's not they're all powerful, but this is another powerful one about. Um, tell me in in your words why it's so powerful. So let's talk about that Lincoln dealership. Again. Mm -hmm. Um, I, when I talk about this in my speeches, I, I say, we need to consider the other person's interests more important than our own, mm -hmm. consider the other person's interests more important than their own. And this Lincoln dealer over the course of purchasing a number of cars made me realize that they were considering my interests more important than their own. They knew what Zig Ziglar always said, that if you help enough other people get what they want out of life, you'll get whatever it is you want out of life. Mm -hmm. You can have Zig said it, you can have anything you want in life. You help enough other people get what they want out of life. Well, what they wanted was to sell Lincolns. And if they could help me get it a beautiful car at a nice price, a good price, then I was gonna I was gonna buy it and they were gonna get the commission. Mm -hmm. And they got that. Unlike any other car dealer I've ever met, the, the Lincoln dealership in Bellevue, Washington got that. I bought that navigator. And after I bought the navigator, I bought an MKX for me, which was their uh, sort of the up it's yeah. the Lincoln version of the Ford Edge. Now I'll tell you, I was buying a car a couple of years later. I was I was looking for a um, PT cruiser for my daughters, mm -hmm. and so I was looking for used PT cruisers. And we found one at the Honda dealership. And I'm sitting in the Honda dealership, and uh, they had a used one. And I turned to my wife at the time, and I said, "Hey, I wonder if the Lincoln dealership has any used PT cruisers?" Because I was kind of getting the runaround from the Honda dealership. So I literally, sitting in the Honda dealership, I called up and I remem remembered the sales guy's name. And I said, hey, do you guys have any used PT cruisers? And he said, yeah, actually, we have two. And I said, how many miles, what years? He told me. I said, come on, do they run good? Yeah. Can you get it to me at this price? Yep. I said, get it cleaned up. I'm coming to pick it up. I bought it on the phone mm -hmm. um, because I was loyal to them. I went back, I bought, and it wasn't expensive. It was 10 grand or something like that. Mm -hmm. It was a PT cruiser I was buying for my daughters. But I was loyal to them, and I bought a used car from them, and it, it ended up being the third car. And I think between the three cars, I think the Navigator was 60, and the, the, the MKX was 40, and the Navigator. I bought 110 grand worth of cars in about three years mm -hmm. from them. Yeah. Uh, because they got me to the point where I trusted them, and I was loyal to them. Because they served me. Mm -hmm. No, and I've had I've had a similar experience actually with uh, with Acura. I've been they they have over the years, and I'd, and this isn't just in one dealership because we were over on the east coast. Was be back here is they they go out of their way to make it almost impossible for you to walk away from them because they they serve you so well. They give you such a great deal. They call you up early before a lease or whatever's over and they say, hey, do you want a new car? And you can drive off with no money down today. Just bring in the car. I mean, they just, you know, and because we know, let's face it, car buying is not a fun experience for most people and most dealerships. So 
I, I, re I really, you know, that makes all the difference. And then finally, in the last uh, bit of time we have here, the power of excellence creates respect. I love those two words together are fantastic, excellence and respect. Yeah, here's what I always say. Excellence attracts. Mm -hmm. if, if someone excels at something, they're going to have influence in your life. And I'll give you an example. If you want to make money, if you want to learn about money, do you go to the guy at the end of the off ramp holding a, pay, a, a brown cardboard thing that says, you know, we'll work for food and say, hey, what's your best stock tip? <laughs> or do you go to your rich uncle who owns a bunch of apartment complexes? Mm -hmm. If you're having marriage problems, do you go to the couple that doesn't, they don't have an excellent marriage. They fight all the time. Mm -hmm. Or do you go to the couple that's been married for 40 years? Right. When you want to learn how to, to, to lose weight and become fit, do you go to the big fat guy? <laughs> Or do you go to the guy that's totally, you know, ripped up and in and, and great shape? If you go to the person who is, is already excelling at what you want to do and you say, influence me, mm -hmm. help me, change my thoughts, beliefs, and actions. We literally go to them. Why? Because we respect them because they excel at it. Yeah. And so that's how you have influence is by excellence is and, and, and it breeds this, um, this sense of respect from people. And now you have influence in their lives uh, and, and uh, in, in, in ways that a person who has no excellence doesn't. And that's a great point to end on here, because I think for, for our watchers and, and listeners is, is that should be a goal you set yourself. You should set yourself a goal of being the person that other people come to for something right whatever it is whatever it is you want to you decide what you want to excel at set that as a goal for yourself because i think that will obviously it helps other people but it also helps yourself with uh, with your goal setting and achieving and being excellent in what you do if you say my goal is to have people come to me and say you know john i'm coming to talk to you because you know you obviously know or are really good at x y or z whatever it is yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, product companies know this better than anybody. Mm -hmm. It's the it's the, the celebrity endorsement. Sure. I mean, take Wheaties. Wheaties. What do they call themselves? Breakfast of champions. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> no, nobody going down. Nobody at Olympic Village every four years who's going down to run the 1500 starts <laughs> with a couple of bowls of Wheaties. But yeah. Wheaties knows that if you slap the best basketball player of all time, Michael sure. Jordan, on the cover, people are going to say, well, hey, Michael Jordan eats Wheaties. But he can dunk. Maybe if I eat Wheaties, I can dunk. Mm -hmm. And I always say, you're 5'2", 240, you're going <laughs> to dunk, right? But people think that Wheaties must be great because we've got – championship gymnasts we've got the best basketball players we've got the best football it's brilliant if you think about it mm. they influence the marketplace and get people to buy a mediocre cereal at best because they call themselves the breakfast of champions because they pay millions of dollars to real champions mm -hmm. and it's almost like they transfer that respect and that influence by partnering uh, excellence with their product. Now, here's how I close most of my seminars. You are the product. Yep. Combine excellence with the product and you have influence. Mm -hmm. You're the product. People are buying you. If you're in sales and you are, if you're watching this and listening to this, you're the product. They may be buying a widget from you, but they're not buying that widget if you look like you know, you just rolled out of bed. Uh, if you can barely string a sentence together, if you told a lie four minutes into the first presentation, uh, you know, if you're a negative Nelly, they're not buying from you. Why? Because you're the product. Mm -hmm. They'll they'll skip what you think is the product if they think you, the real product, are bad. Yeah, no, I love it. Uh, listen, uh, this has been fantastic, Chris. Uh, great insights. Um, so before we go, I'd just like you to tell people a little bit more about yourself and how they can learn more about you and contact you. Sure, absolutely. They can find me at chriswidener.com. They can find me at Facebook, which is facebook.com forward slash Chris Widener Speaker. Instagram is at Chris Widener Speaker. Twitter is at Chris Widener. Uh, if anybody's in involved in any sort of sales uh, events or seminars or anything like that. If you're a sales leader, you want to bring me in to speak, just go to chriswidener.com. There's a 
telephone number you can call me there, 877-212-4747, which is 877-21-CHRIS. If you want to give me a buzz and have me come and speak to your event, would love to do that. Um, and uh, lots of ways to find me. All you have to do is Google my name and you'll find me. Yeah, and I think uh, anybody who's uh, listening to or watching this, you'll see, obviously, you know, Chris uh, has earned his his spot in the, the top 50 worldwide speakers. He's obviously is not just informative, but entertaining. Um, I want to tell you something. Yeah. I, I just said Google me if you want to find me. And going back to this integrity thing, I always tell people, Google the term Chris Widener scam or Chris Widener review or anything like that. You know what you won't find? You won't find anybody bad mouthing you. Mm -hmm. I've spent 31 years in this industry, and I certainly haven't been perfect, but I've lived my life and I've lived my career, my business in such a way that you can look for the bad stuff on me and you're not going to find it. You might find a bad book review every once in a while on uh, on Amazon, mm -hmm. but most of them are five-star reviews. Every now and then, somebody doesn't like my book. Yeah. Well, you can't please everybody, right? Yeah. All right, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline and CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. And again, thanks to Chris for a great, insightful interview today. Thank you.